Southeastern Minnesota is a beautiful place to live, work, farm, and play. Gently rolling hills give way to steep bluffs, rocky outcrops, sinkholes, and caves. Fed by springs, many of the streams run cold and support trout populations. The Whitewater River runs here, offering an angler's paradise of brown, brook, and rainbow trout. The state park that bears its name is popular for hiking, swimming, camping, bird watching, and of course, fishing. The Whitewater River joins the Mississippi at Weaver Bottoms, a backwater area historically important for migrating waterfowl and wintering fish. A total of 419,000 acres in Wabasha, Winona, and Olmsted counties all drain to this part of the Mississippi. A smattering of small towns dot the watershed among crops, pastures, and forests. But there are some troubles in this paradise. By examining the health of the waters and working with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, the Whitewater River Watershed Project has identified three pollutants of top concern, bacteria, nitrates, and sediment. Like its diverse landscape, the Watershed Project is looking at diverse ways to protect the waters. Leading the way to healthier waters is a council of farmers, the first of its kind in Minnesota. One unique thing about the farmer-led council uh, is that as a council they recognize that each farm is different, each parcel is different, and how that producer manages that land is going to be different than what his neighbor does. And they recognize that um, the solution is not going to be a cookie cutter solution. It needs to be tailored for each individual farm and producer. The council started with a federal grant in 2010. Jerry Hildebrandt, a former feedlot officer, knocked on farmers' doors and explained the idea of a farmer-led council. Twenty-six farmers agreed to the venture. Modeled after farmer councils in Iowa, the Whitewater Group meets about four times a year, around their farming schedule, to review water monitoring data and to discuss ways to reduce egg pollutants. They decide on which incentives to promote to their neighbors. The farmer-led council would like to do is to keep it simple. Uh, their incentive sheet is one eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. So the farmer or the producer completes the top with their name and address, and then does it's a checklist, checking off the things that they would like to try that year, and proof of completing those projects would be sales slips or or you know having somebody come by to see, see that there is a cover crop there or whatever the incentive might be. But they want to keep it simple. They don't like paperwork, so. <laughs> Dan Brandt grows corn and soybeans near Iota. He knew he wanted to be a farmer when he was just five years old. Since then, he's ridden the ups and downs of farming as a producer and a sales representative. He is a member of the Minnesota Soybean Growers and the Farmer-Led Council. Jerry Hildebrandt came and asked if I would be on the Farmer-Led Council, and this was in December of 2010, I thought, yeah, I'd like to be involved in that. Because the way he made it sound, we'd be able to learn what's going on and learn the facts and, not, uh, and be able to talk with city people like, yes, this is happening, or no, it's not happening. You know, you've got it wrong. And uh, I wanted to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. To say I was the only one out here talking this, uh, you might think I, I was a crackpot or something, but a group of uh, 30 farmers get together and say we, we need to do something about uh, erosion, nitrates, uh, do the best that we can do. Well, right away we've got all these acres involved, and if you make a management change for the better, you should be able to uh, tell that in our streams. And that's, that's why we started this, is to clean up our streams. I think that some people, when they first heard of our council, they thought, uh, you know, there's going to be all sets of new rules and regulations. Well, farmers are not looking for more rules and regulations. They want to talk amongst themselves and see how they can fix something without Big Brother uh, telling them how to do it. Lynn and Karen Zobel own and operate a dairy farm near Plainview in southeast Minnesota. Well, there's a lot of pressure, I think, in society these days to have everything you deserve. But the trouble is people, for the most part, really don't know what's important anymore, I think. And having a lot of trinkets or the latest cell phone or things like that, 
aren't really going to make any difference when somebody's digging it out of an archaeological dig thousands of years from now. It's nothing compared to the legacy and taking care of the place you were responsible for. Eric Kredemacher was born and raised on a farm near Altura. Still farming together, the family business is called Pork and Plants, with pork being the farm side and the plants being the greenhouse side. Eric describes his parents as conservation-minded and being one of the first families in the area to implement contoured strips and other best management practices. While the focus remains on growing premium crops and sustainability, today's system includes organic farming, integrating animals within the cropping system, and a diverse rotation system. My immediate thing with my parents and stuff, you know, coming from them and being taught to be sustainable and, you know, look at the environment. But, you know, my wife and I, you know, keep taking it farther. You know, her and I kind of got this philosophy that, you know, you know, we're, we're really here to be, you know, caretakers of the land and do the best we can with it, with the hopes of passing on to our, you know, the next generation in a better state. A lot of farmers and, you know, they try to, f they try to fight nature from the weeds to the bugs to whatever. You know, our mindset is to kind of work with it, use the nature to our benefit to, uh, to overcome those problems or, leave, you know, to the, to, the, to the best that we can. With farmers working with farmers to identify problems and remedies, this council is leading the way to healthier waters. Their work is important to the people who live and visit here. Healthy waters support a healthy community, economically and environmentally. I think any time that you have, you're trying to do something different on the landscape for landscape management, you, you can have the greatest conservation implementation plan in the world, but if the landowner is not on board and isn't aware of that there is a conservation impl implementation plan, it's not going to go very far. Having the farmers be involved allows them to be proactive and allows them to be in the driver's seat. And farmers, by nature, are problem solvers. Why not let them be a part of solving the problem?